What is the dragon and the chasing the dragon paradox? What is that? Every experience in life. Where is it? Like that shit just go. Your eyes, your nose, your mouth, your ears. They all experience things in a ratio. Like your eyes only reflect what you see. It's just like a mirror. Like you see it and then you move from it. And then it's no longer in front of the mirror. The taste, the smell, the things you hear. The reason why you chase the experience. How it felt that first time. But you can't store the feelings. Feelings are never stored. You can never have that experience, that exact experience again in your life. Once you've had it once, that's just what it is. So experiences are empty. You only do them because lack thereof of knowing what they are. That's why you got to change your priorities and have an understanding of what it is that you're trying to do in life. Otherwise, you're going to be dwarfed by the possibility of what you think you can do. The experiences are all empty. And they go off into eternity as light. Because it's the light that we see, hear, taste, smell, feel. The only thing that's permanent is the heart. It ain't too much the heart that's beating. It's the conscious heart. The feeling of love. That thing that everybody wants to cash in when all other emotions are available. But see, that's the catch. When all other When all of the empty circumstances are available and they showing you they face, you're supposed to keep in mind that they fleeting. They don't even stay. You can't even hold on to them. But love is something that you can remember forever. It echoes through eternity in each lifetime. It's the reason why you walk up to some people and you just feel good around them even when you don't know them. It's the difference when you go around certain people and you just feel that vibe to move away. Love echoes through eternity. And when people are scarred, they don't want to deal with that because of all the emotional values that are empty. They're empty. So because they're empty, they need to be fulfilled by involvement. So they beckon the call and they touch things that are valuable, that'll make you turn your head and pay attention. It's like being afraid of the dark. You know ain't nothing there, but you keep turning your head looking, hoping something pop out that shit. Because you're afraid. So the whole value of being afraid of the dark shows in the actions of the physical feeling in the body. You act jittery. You can't keep your head is on a swivel. You're looking all around. You're trying to see. The explanation describes the outcome of the circumstance. This is why it's important to study yourself and get that class of you and understand what that is because that's the highest point of anything that you're going to obtain in life. And it's always going to be fulfilling because the thing is, you don't know yourself. You don't. And if you knew yourself, you would know it as well as you drive. You would know it as well as you walk. How you brush your teeth with your eyes closed. Or how you dig in your, dig in your nose or whatever have you. How you scratch your itch on your body when you can't see it. In the, you don't know where the back part of you at, but you know how to get to it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because you know it. You're supposed to know things about yourself. You're not supposed to try. You're supposed to sit down and study the understanding of what you are, so therefore you can correctly navigate yourself. It's a drug. Life is a drug. 
I've said in plenty of my bills that the whole purpose of everything that takes place is the attribute of everything dwindling down. So there is energies or retrospects of different levels that are similar to everything that we deal with. They're just in a higher frequency. So if I say to you, you know what? The energies of life will have you addicted or have you in life doing all types of shit. You'll feel like, you know what? This is what it's supposed to be. You'll feel like the life is prioritized by the motion of you just being there, how you feel and how you move every day. Well, that's an addiction. People are afraid of not being seen, not being spoke about. Nobody will just go away. You know what I'm saying? And live. Like, you can't just go away without being known that you're moving. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's the fear of separation. You know what I mean? The collapse of a reality that's tangible by convenience and everybody else understanding something about you. Like, this world is usurped into a social a social visual that forces you to be something that you're not. So you... You consistently just grow to bury the person that you are until that person is no more and then you're something else. And then most of your life is a lot of anger and apologies. I know that because I got family members that's like that. I had people, friends, and watch their family members die like that. See people when I was young be in an apartment by themselves with magazines piled to the ceiling. 20 different TVs and only one of them worked. Mad remote controls, keys and shit. Just, you know what I'm saying? Just doing the, the ridiculous eccentric shit. And they got like that because of whatever they was dealing with. It just went from one thing to another. So you mad. And then it just keeps boiling over to that. And next thing you know, you a hoarder. Or you're a drug addicted person, or you're a prostitute, or you're, you know what I'm saying? Like, nothing good comes out of that shit ever. You know what I'm saying? Like, the addiction of life makes you be addicted to the, the, the finite things of life. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's what I mean by the dwindle down of energy, so that you're addicted to the aspects of how you maintain life. This is how the things in life that are created become addictions to people. That's why they make the word vice. A vice squeezes, you know what I'm saying? It squeezes. So even by your own will, you squeeze yourself, you know what I'm saying, out of the out of the out of the um out of the projection of what you're supposed to be or do. It's just compiling all the other shit on top of you. So eventually it's gonna crush <laughs> what you really is, right? And that shit is up out of there. So but you know, it get deep, you know what I mean? So Studying yourself is imperative. So therefore, you can experience the experiences fully. If you knew that that wasn't ever going to be another experience that way, you would enjoy it the best way you could the first time. You would remember it. You would cherish it. You would treat a memory, an experience as something superficial. But this is what I mean by we are careless as people we have gotten used to just throwing away things and misplacing things and just saying forget it and then we start putting everything in that same nutshell whether it's things that don't have the same meaning or quality as something that's physical and tangible so like you know you would throw away a coffee cup in the same breath you would throw away something that's supposed to guide your life that way by your own choices and decisions See how the integrity starts to pull every single choice in the same direction. It's like a drain. So even if even if you think the things are separate, eventually you will be on that page with everything. You know what I'm saying? And that's the reality. Like not not allowing you to overtake you by what was forced on you. You know what I'm saying? So it constructively destructive constructively destructive and it has a whole mechanic to it that doesn't allow you to see that this is the outcome of what you're doing because you're not, not particularly trying to see the vibes of the outcome of what you're planting like you ain't seeing that you planting these seeds and these seeds that you plant is something that you have to reap 
because you sold them. This shit is deep, yo. You know what I'm saying? Like, shit is real deep. And I take the time to sit inside myself sometimes. You know what I mean? And try to reevaluate my thought patterns. And, and I always go full circle. I always go back to this nutty ass, happy, crazy little kid. Because that's who I've always been. You know, the daredevil, like the. Always happy. Ain't need to be around a bunch of people to be happy. I was happy within myself. And I knew that from start that you have to be able to know happiness and love for yourself. So therefore, when you show it because you're happy that way, it gives off that energy. You know, like you bust out laughing around somebody real hard and, and try it. If you never did this before, try this and watch watch the effect. Don't even have nothing to laugh at. Just laugh real hard around somebody. Without a purpose, and watch they start laughing. They're going to be like, hey, what you laughing at? You know what I'm saying? It's because the energy of intention is powerful. On both scales, whether you're going negative or positive, it's powerful. And it changes people. we got to be mindful what we sow. Because we're going to reap that. You know what I'm saying? You already know the vibes, man. It's Naga. Respect. You are light. Nupanuku. Nupanuka. Nuka. Deuces.